Hey guys, come on downstairs. We're bringing another episode of Career Mode Las Vegas to you. It's Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're in job number 12 in the Las Vegas area. And we're going to be heading out to Peach Springs, Arizona and Grand Canyon West. Let's recap our previous job, Christmas Lights, Christmas Day of 2022. We ended up with $118,908.32. That is where we are at as we start job number 12. 12 of 17 in this area. All right, let's take a look at the map really quick. We're going to be starting at KVGT, North Las Vegas, out on the left, heading to 1G4, which is in Arizona to the east, and right at the uh, westernmost point of the Grand Canyon. North Las Vegas. It's December 26th, the day after Christmas. Another beautiful sunny day here. Like I've said before, we get sunny days up until job number 15, and then we get hit with some overcast weather, which causes some problems for us, You, as you shall see. So mixture rich, throttle open just a little bit, batteries on, beacon on, prime it a couple of times. here we go all right no passenger today today is a parcel delivery once again for the second job in a row I forgot to uh, label the job and the work order but it's really simple just delivering a package out to the visitor center at Grand Canyon West the day after Christmas as they get reopened for business out there. Do our magneto checks. We're watching the uh, RPMs as we check each magneto. Make sure that if one of them went out, the other one's working well enough. And uh, let's get our nav frequencies in here. And our course, I believe we're navigating around only one VOR. And the uh, first Our course is, is going to be 116. Get our altimeter set. Three decimal. Three zero decimal three nine. Ready to taxi east. Departure with Papa. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree Taxi Two and hold short of runway three zero left using taxiway Romeo Alpha cross runway three zero left Alpha Delta Kilo. Contact tower on one one niner decimal one five when ready. Taxiing hold short runway tree zero left using taxiway Romeo Alpha cross runway tree zero left Alpha Delta Kilo Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. Okay, so we're taking off runway three zero left again. It was windy here last night as we flew around the city to check out the lights. There was a seven knot wind coming from the south. Uh, today is perfectly calm. So we're going to taxi out of our spot here. Head to runway 30 left. So I believe the VOR that we're going to be navigating around is the BLD VOR once again, just north of Boulder City. We've used that one several times. Basically, anytime we've headed uh, to the south, generally, we've started with that VOR. 
Again, we're in the uh, Cessna 152. There's no GPS and no autopilot. So we've got to navigate old school with uh, navigational radios and instruments. And we have to hand fly the aircraft the entire time. There's no such thing as autopilot. So with much more hands-on experience, it's been a lot of fun. But I'm not going to lie, I will be uh, fairly happy to get back into a plane with autopilot. Some of these flights, like flying into Los Angeles uh, or, or like our next one where we fly into Mexico, they were bloody long flights to hand fly the airplane the entire time. Okay, so uh, let's do our run up here. We're going to try to get up to about 1,750 RPMs. Hold it here for a little bit. Everything looks good, sounds good. So now we just need our takeoff clearance. We should be set to go. We'll de be departing to the east, taking off towards the north. So we should make a right turn and de depart east when we are uh, cleared to do so. All right. Mixture back to rich for takeoff. North Las Vegas Tower Cessna Bravo Golf Tree ready for east departure at runway tree zero left. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree altimeter tree zero decimal tree nine or wind calm east departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway tree zero left. Cleared for takeoff runway tree zero left Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. All right, let's head towards the Grand Canyon, guys. It's a pretty flight. We, uh, we'll get another look at Lake Mead and uh, see some parts of Lake Mead that we haven't seen yet in the series. And then we head into Arizona. It's surprising how close uh, the Grand Canyon actually is to Las Vegas, the, the uh, western edge of the Grand Canyon. I was actually surprised at how close it was. We begin our takeoff roll. Ooh, a little bit squirrely there. And wheels up. So the best rate of climb in the Cessna 152 is at 65 knots. We'll try our best to keep it there using our trim to try to trim for this climb. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, continue for east departure. And uh, we're given the go ahead to North Las Vegas Tower Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, continue for east departure. Turn right and depart for the east. down at some residential neighborhoods in Las Vegas. So Las, Las Vegas obviously is a photogrammetry city. Which means that all the buildings should look like their real life actual counterparts, not just generic buildings that are shaped like them from the roof. Our next city that we go to, which I am keeping close to the vest because we're gonna have a video introducing it as well as flying from Las Vegas to that city. We'll have one episode where we move cities, where we show our flight from Vegas to that city. Our next one is also a photogrammetry city. Our third one, however, is not. And I don't—I didn't really realize that until after I had chosen and done a few episodes. I 
flew over the city and I was like, what the heck? This this doesn't look right to me. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. But in that third area, we don't do a lot North with... North Las Vegas Tower, Cessna Bravo Golf Tree frequency change. ...within the actual city skyline or boundaries. So it doesn't affect us too much, to be honest. But I was a little bit disappointed it wasn't a photogrammetry city. Our fourth one is. Our fourth job place is a photogrammetry city. But that's all, that's all stuff that will be revealed in due time. Right now we're concentrating on Las Vegas. Nellis approach Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is type Cessna 152 tree miles east of North Las Vegas, 5,000 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, Nellis approach. Squawk 1201. There's Nellis right there off to our left. We finally have the Squawk option to... Squawk 1201 Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. Get clearance transition through... Cessna Bravo Golf Tree their airspace I mean I think we should do it earlier maybe I don't know maybe even before we take off I don't know I don't know what the process is but we do it as early as as this ATC system on flight simulator will let us and I know like the ATC gets a little bit cumbersome a little bit it's a little bit challenging let's let's not kid ourselves it's it's outdated uh, and it's the same ATC system that they had in basically in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2002 hasn't changed at all hasn't been updated hasn't been upgraded it's still the same but I still like to use it just just because it just brings an, another element of of uh, realism to the flight even though it's it's not as real, it's less realistic to not even talk to anybody and, and just pretend like we're the only people in the sky. I don't find that very realistic either. So we do the best that we can with the uh, circumstances that we have with the ATC. It's a nice look at Las Vegas. Completely different view than we had last night on Christmas night where it was all lit up. Now it's a little bit hazy. And uh, judging by where the sun is, I can't remember what time I told you all it was. Let's see, we have a we have a clock here, don't we? Yeah, the clock says it's about what a, a quarter after three, something like that, three ten. So it's kind of sun is high in the afternoon. By the time we get to Grand Canyon West, the sun will still be up, but its angle should be a little bit less direct so instead of getting the uh, washed out hazy look we might get a little bit softer softer colors on the desert maybe a few more shadows here and there Cessna Bravo Golf Tree contact Las Vegas approach on 119er decimal 775 good day all right, let's move ahead just a little bit. We are heading towards Boulder City. We have headed towards this VOR several times already in this series. But this time, instead of turning and heading south, we're going to turn and head east. So at about 8,200 feet here, don't think we need to climb much more. I think we're pretty much safe to get over all the, the uh, mountain ranges that we need to pass. But I, th I think we may we may climb up to around 8,500 feet and call it good. Cessna 
Southwest 19er, 49er, contact Los Angeles Center on 124.625. Good day. Man, the desert looks awesome from the sky. Going to 124.625 Southwest, 19er, 49er. So, I mean, I, I love the planes, uh, and I love flying and learning about aviation, and I'm getting better at it. I mean, this is job number 12 at this point. At this point, I'm not great when I actually did this flight, but I'm learning. So we get the mixture set right for our uh, 8,200 feet. It's a little bit hard to set the mixture in this Cessna because... The RPM needle just doesn't move unless you make drastic changes. And that and basically that the only way that moves is basically when you cut it, cut it off almost. All right, so we've reached our VOR. And we're going to turn and head to the east here. So we were at a heading of like 116 and our next heading that we're looking for the radial that's going to take us all the way to Grand Canyon West is around what is it looking like what do we have set there around 80 something like that so a little bit northeast, tiny bit northeast. Okay, there's Hoover Dam once again. We've seen it a couple of times in the series. Nice lighting on it here. It used to be that you, when you drove across that gorge you would just drive over the top of the dam they have now built that that highway bridge right there and uh, the only couple of times that I've gone over Hoover Dam I've ac actually driven right over the dam and the last time was that actually the uh, bridge was under construction so it was several years ago the bridge has been done for several years now I just haven't been back down that way does bring back some memories, though, of, of uh, trips that I used to take with my family down to see my cousin in Kingman, Arizona. So Lake Mead, a lot like Lake Powell, has a lot of little arms, which are popular, may help make it popular, because you can get up into one of those one of those arms of the lake and uh, find some privacy up in there oftentimes uh, maybe throw out an anchor and get to the shore and camp maybe so the sun's starting to get a little bit lower out in the sky towards the uh, southwest of us making the shadows a little bit less harsh and making the color a, a little bit less washed out the lighting effects on flight simulator are awesome from the light from the uh, lighting inside the plane to all the lighting on the terrain and buildings and such very nice seriously I mean compared to what I grew up flying back in the early 2000s this is just even on Xbox it's freaking incredible like like mind-blowing to somebody who grew up playing FS 2000 you know what I mean just like it even on Xbox I know Xbox isn't as good as PC like there's pros and cons as I digress again for like the billionth time you can tell I have ADHD can't you I do I have ADHD 
feet. And I actually, <laughs> I actually lost my train of thought right there. Thanks to thanks to this ATC, I had lost my train of thought. Um, so I, I grew up playing uh, Flight Simulator 2000. I think that's the first one that I owned. Then I played 2002 and 2004. And then I bought FSX in 2008, but my computer was trash. Like, my computer just wasn't good, so it didn't run it very well. So after trying my best to run it on crappy settings, I basically bailed on FSX and just kept playing FS2004. And I, I played that, I mean, Obviously, it got outdated and the graphics weren't very good. But I would still occasionally throw it on all the way up until this this game came out. Um, and even on Xbox, it's incredible. Like, And that gets me back to what, what I was saying. Like, I know it, it's better graphics-wise on a really high-end PC, gaming PC with a really nice video card and all that that kind of stuff. And and that's awesome. I you know, but that doesn't come without headaches from what I can tell. Like it, it seems like the people that play this on PC are constantly stressed about frames per second, uh, constantly stressed about settings to optimize their system. And I mean granted once you've you know optimized it and found that sweet spot on your system and i'm sure it's absolutely stunning and amazing but i've read about a lot of people having a lot of headaches with their system uh trying to maximize it and then dealing with crashes to dex desktop uh dealing with st some stuttering dealing with uh, fps issues dealing with their pc overheating uh dealing with uh, issues in their um, community folder, all you know, lots of lots of issues that I've read about. And if you want like a if you want a headache free experience, I absolutely recommend Xbox. Sure, it's a visual downgrade a little bit from PC. It's also about four thousand dollars cheaper, <laughs> and in my mind, like I don't know that that much money is worth a little bit of a visual upgrade. You know what I mean? Like I just don't know that that's worth it. It might be. Maybe it is. And, you know, maybe people who have gotten their settings perfect and optimized and found that sweet spot maybe it is worth every penny maybe it is but f for me at this stage right now um, I don't have time to deal with the issues that I've read that can arise on PC I just don't I have two kids I'm a stay-at-home dad I've got a four-year-old and a two and a half year old and they're little nightmares a lot of the time and like, I started this channel as a sports gaming channel, and I played every sports game under the sun, right? I tried to do series on hockey, on golf, on football, on basketball, on baseball. Like, you name it. Soccer. I tried to do series on everything. I had all kinds of time. I was a stay-at-home dad with no kids. Like, my wife worked. I was recovering from a heart attack, and I didn't have a job at the time. I stayed home and was trying to make YouTube my job, kind of. I mean, mostly I was just playing, obviously, but... But I had all the time in the freaking world to grow my channel and to do series in every sports game under the sun. And I don't have time. I don't have time to play those sports games anymore. I just don't. And quite frankly, like, I don't have the desire to anymore. Like, it's been a long time since I've put a sports video up here. And it's not that I don't still love sports. It's not that I don't still love those games. Los it's Angeles just that... Center, Cessna, Bravo, Golf Tree, 9,100 feet. They're time consuming. Like they they are time consuming games. And it's time consuming to make the videos and cut them up 
and with a four-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old in a house that isn't all that big, it was really difficult to do commentary. All right, we are we are checking in on our airport weather here. It looks like the wind is calm out at Grand Canyon West. Uh, it says no clouds below 12,000. I don't even see any clouds at 12,000. Like it, it looks pretty dang clear. So uh, we can basically we can choose which runway we want as we hit a little bit of turbulence here, a little bit of uh, wind here at altitude. Even though it is calm down at ground level, we tried to uh, stabilize our plane here before we decide what runway to land on four traffic Cessna Bravo Gulf tree nine miles west 9,000 feet inbound to land runway 17 okay so we're here guys the uh, canyons that you see ahead of us are the beginning of the Grand Canyon we're at the western edge we're gonna land at Grand Canyon West Airport on runway 17 the wind is calm so we're going to uh, Enter the traffic pattern, I believe, uh, at a 45 degree angle to the middle of the runway on our upwind leg, which is, is what we should do. And we need to start dropping some altitude, so we cut the engine a little bit here. So yeah, with a four-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old, like, I barely have time to play the games and most of the time like I, I do my flights at night after the kids are in bed after my wife has gone to bed uh, because she works early mornings she has to go to bed fairly early so we get the kids in bed my wife's in bed usually by nine and then I have you know three or four hours to fly and that's where I do these flights I mean I could still do the sports games but they just got taxing on me and I, I needed a break so flight simulator has been a great break from that I don't know if I'll get back into the sports game scene on my YouTube channel I mean I'm still I play NHL 22 still a few times I haven't gotten 23 I haven't bought any I haven't bought any of the new games I uh, NBA 2k 23 and Madden 23 I bought but I haven't played a ton and uh, I don't know, like playing games where you either win or lose started to wear on me, I think. You know, like I, I have my teams that I cheer for in real life, and that wears on me when they lose, but then turning around and playing playing video games where I win and lose, it just got to the point where the, where the rest of my life with my kids at home can be a little bit stressful and chaotic, and... Uh, it just became too much to do the sports games and this flight simulator you don't win or lose sure I can crash I've crashed before like but I'm getting to the point with it where I, I basic I basically do pretty good at landing every time which I love which I always is a point I always wanted to get to on the earlier flight simulators back in the day but I never could because I guess I just didn't understand a few basic things that maybe now I understand um, that I struggled with before but I always wanted to just be able to go anywhere and land anywhere and I'm starting to get to that point now I'm not you know I'm not perfect yet but I'm starting to get much better at being able to land where I want to land and do what I want to do in the sim and the fact that you know if I I'm dealing with my kids all day and it's stressful and they're unreasonable and they're four and two and a half and they're chaotic and loud at night, the last thing I want to do is play an intense sports game, you know, where I'm like white knuckle and like trying to win and challenging myself, which I like to do in those sports games. I don't like them to be easy. I like challenges. But at night, when I have time to play games, I just can't bring myself to do that because I want to relax. And there's nothing more relaxing than getting in my fake cockpit and flying an airplane around like it is just like it just resets me every single night and that's why uh, I've done the flight simulator thing and not the sports thing lately because 
basically it's therapeutic to me it helps me deal with my kids the next day it helps me reset it helps me relax all right anyway let's get back to this flight here's the grand canyon guys look at that the colorado river down there this is grand canyon west i mean the grand canyon's huge and we're not going to see very much of it here basically just this one western air edge of it is all we're going to see so uh, we've entered the traffic pattern. I think we're on our downwind leg now. We want to stay. We want to be about a thousand feet above airport ground level, which out here over the canyon is actually like probably seven thousand feet above ground level. So we're headed on our downwind leg. I'm not really great at hand flying traffic patterns yet. I'm getting better. But another beautiful shot at the canyon. Nice colors. The rivers down there in the shadows. There is a payware for this airport, which I don't have, which also does the visitor center that has the famous uh, overhanging deck that overhangs out over the canyon and it's just off to the left you can see some buildings but it's not it's not the payware so it's just generic looking buildings but that's where the uh, visitor center is so it, it's just the generic airport One and the generic buildings Bravo Golf Tree is on downwind runway 17. so maybe we'll start so in real life, do you announce like that you're on downwind? Do you have to announce that to the controller, or do they can they see you on the radar and just like know? Like, do you have to tell them you're on downwind? I don't know that I've ever seen a pilot get on and be like, "Hey, I'm on downwind." Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they do. Like, I don't know. I these airports that that don't have controllers that talk back to you on a flight simulator I just don't I don't think there's much realism to using the ATC in this situation right here because there's no two-way conversation at all but I guess you can tell them you're on downwind if you want I just don't know that you have to and for the most part like maybe I will on this one use it but when I'm landing on say like dirt runways or grass runways there's no controller like I'm not gonna try to contact what is some dude sitting in a lawn chair or something outside the grass runway sitting in his tent controlling like I don't know it gives you the option to contact somebody but there is no tower <laughs> there is no on those grass runways you know what I mean so we're on the downwind here we're gonna turn on to base trying to stay at a thousand feet above the airport ground level but I think we end up a little bit lower than that here hard to do it's hard to uh, hand fly and keep your altitude when you're trying to look at the scenery too all right so we're turning on to base here's our base leg so here we should be able to see the runway out of our left window and line ourselves up with it. I'm sorry you're starting to hear some noise from my kids. They're starting to get restless. They've been quiet for quite a long time. Now I have commentated on a couple of videos and they've been pretty good. I've had to stop a few times and redo some things because they've made noise, but for the most part they're doing pretty good and if they make a little bit of noise here, you guys are, are understand understanding of it, I think. There you go. There was some noise from my little boy. Grayson, can you be quiet, buddy, please? Gray, gray. Gray, gray. I'm almost done, okay? Can you be quiet? He just looked at me like, I'm done. I'm done being quiet. <laughs> He's done, guys. He's done being quiet. But we're almost done here, too. We're, we're almost, almost on the ground. Okay. We are going to turn on to final.
Ooh, we get some glare off of the uh, water. Was it the water? Maybe it was the windshield. Maybe it was the window. Okay, we're on final. Let's put this thing down. Put it down before all hell breaks loose in my house. So yeah, I just had to move my kids into the toy room because they had kind of meandered out here where I'm at. Started making some noise. They've been really good though. I mean, it's hard for a four-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old to be quiet for 40 minutes, you know? That's that's tough. And we don't live in a really big house. So they've been really good. And, yeah, you, you'll hear them every once in a while. And you'll hear me talk to them. And it's just the way it is. Not much I can do about that at this point in my life. It's either that or just don't make videos. And making videos keeps me sane. Whether anybody watches them or not, I don't even care don't even care y'all could watch them y'all could not watch them I just don't care to be honest I don't care because basically I just like I'm a, a, a historian and so I always I just compulsively feel the need to record stuff <laughs> and since I don't have you know I don't have a, a job going on right now all I I mean I, I watch my kids and yeah, I do a lot of recording with them. Like I'll record videos of them and take pictures of them and all that that kind of stuff. I just compulsively feel the need to make a record of my flights. I don't know why. I don't know why I do it. I may or may not watch them at some point in the future. I may or may not have anybody watch them. I don't. It just doesn't even that that part doesn't matter that much to me. Okay, let's see if we can put this down. Uh, it said, last I, I, last it said was the wind was calm. And uh, I want to say that maybe that had changed because when we put this down, the wind really pushes me one way and it kind of surprises me because I wasn't expecting it. So I think the wind changed, if I remember right. Let's look and see here. All right, so we're gonna we're at about 50 knots, which is where I like to touch down. Nice and soft. Yeah, see the wind just pushed me or uh, pushed my tail to the right. You can see the wind suck out there. Yeah, it's blowing a little bit from the left. So it wasn't as calm as the controller said it was. And so when we hit the ground, when we when we touch down, the wind pushed our tail to the right which pushed our nose to the left and so we had to correct and it kind of took me by surprise so the landing wasn't super pretty because I was honestly not expecting any of that wind because they said wind calm so something had changed and maybe it was wind calm with a little bit of gusting here and there and we just landed during a wind gust I don't know but I need to be more prepared and I really wasn't prepared for that wind so I need to be really watching and able to react a little bit faster because that just dang near pushed us off the runway which is hard I mean in real life I think you can you can feel it better because you've got you know sensation cues <laughs> where in flight simulator all you have is visual cues you know you're not you're not feeling anything like There's no motion that's that's making you realize that you're being pushed one way or the other. It's just total visual cues. So that makes it a little bit harder on a flight simulator. But I can still do better than what I did. All right, we're going to park this thing. We got this package or whatever we were taking to uh, Grand Canyon West. We got it here. And we're going to cut the engine. And uh, shut things down. Turn the batteries off. Alternator off, battery off, we're done. 57 minute flight from North Las Vegas to Grand Canyon West. Really not that far. We burned 5.56 gallons of fuel. We're going to double that to account for our trip back that we will not actually fly, but we want to acknowledge that we'll have to do. 
Look at that, man. That's pretty. Grand Canyon West. Look at that. Man, I don't know where our next place will be, but I don't know that it will match the beauty of this place. I actually do know where our next place will be, but you guys don't. It was a fun it was a fun area, um, but it wasn't as pretty as this, that's for sure. But there was a lot of interesting jobs in the next area. Interesting jobs, uh, interesting approaches and landings. And uh, it was a fun area, I'm not going to lie. It maybe just wasn't as naturally beautiful as this, but it was a fun area. Okay, that's it for job number 12, Las Vegas area. We're going to try to pump these out a little bit faster now. Let's see, we uh, started with 118, almost $119,000. We made $3,500 on this trip. It was 71 nautical miles. We used 11.12 gallons of gas, cost us $133.44, so our ending balance as of December 26th is $122,274.88, and uh, we're getting closer and closer to being able to buy a new aircraft It will be in area number three, but we're starting to build up our balance. We keep doing job after job and just uh, check off one at a time. This was job number 12 in career mode, Las Vegas, on Mama's Basement.